So after the last video where we talked about confidence intervals on the slope coefficients and the intercept coefficient, I created a simulation so that we can see how these actually work. So what I've done is I've created some simulated data. So if we look at the formula, this is the same formula that I've been using for several videos. We've got 1.4 times x plus 11.1 .1 plus some random error that we've created. In this case, I selected a slightly lower correlation than some of the other examples with an error of 30 uh, for my standard deviation. And then I've gone and rounded the whole thing to two digits so that it looks like money. Uh, now, some of our values uh, for some of our uh, simulated values are going to come out negative, which obviously isn't good for money, but um, we're, we're working from an error amount, so um, that's fine. Uh, we're not going to worry about uh, those particularities. But what I've done then is I've copied this all the way down the table, and I have simulated x values here as well, which I created using the ran between function. I selected some age uh, reasonable age data between 18 and 75, let's say. And because these are still in their random functions, these will update every time we hit enter, as we've seen in previous simulations. So we have some simulated X values, we have some simulated Y values, and I've copied this out for two full letter rounds. So there's something like 78 or more calculations. Uh, or a or hundred of them, I mean, there's quite a lot. So then what I've done here is I've then, based on these simulated values from my regression formula, I have calculated the slope, the intercept, and the correlation of each one of these simulated um, circumstances. Now, the thing to keep in mind about um, these uh, values, they're all based on the same regression line. Um, they're, all the formulas are exactly identical. They're all based on the same X values until we hit, um, you know, refresh, uh, recalculate. They're all, they're all, all the equations are the same. The only thing that's really changing is the error uh, un until we hit refresh. And again, we know that the original slope is 1.4, but we've calculated the slope here for each one of these simulations. And again, keep in mind, um, there is some variability when we when we actually do these calculations. We're estimating the slope from our sample. So think of these as repeated sampling from the same population. And we don't get 1.4 in every case. Uh, we do, in some cases, get values that are close to 1.4. There's a 1.39. There's a 1.5 or 1.3. So sometimes we do get pretty close to our slope that we, the, the actual population slope. But sometimes we get a little further away. Here's a 2.1, a 1.9. Here's a 0.7. Here's another 0.7. So there is some variability in the values of our slopes. And in fact, um, based on all of our simulations, we, we can actually see they do tend to hover around that 1.3, 1.4 range, some more, some less, but they do tend to all be in that same general vicinity, but they're not actually getting us 1.4, but we're because we're estimating from an estimate. Now, same thing for our intercept. We know that the true value of the intercept we go back to our equation is 11.1. .1. That's what we simulated the data on. And so when we actually calculate the intercept, we do get some that are almost 11, but we also get some that are like way off. This is a negative seven. This is a negative 24. Here's a positive 46. Here's a positive 49. Here's a, uh, a negative 11. Um, so there's a great more vari there's a great deal more variability in this case in the intercept than there is in the slope. And again, if we go through the list, we can see that most of the values are positive. There's lots of teens and single digits. 
they do seem to be hovering around 11, but they are much more variable. There's a much wider range of possible outcomes for our slope estimates than there was, or for our intercept estimates than there was for our slope estimates. And we can also look at the correlation. We've calculated the correlation based on our simulation. And we're getting in a lot of cases around 0 0.7, 0 0.7, 0 0.4, 0 0.7, 0 0.6, 0 0.7. So they're all kind of hovering around this 0 0.7, 0 0.6, but you do get a few that are lower, 0 0.4. There was a 0.28. You get some as high as 0.8. And so on. But they are they are hovering around that 0 0.7, 0 0.77 seems to be fairly common range. Now, how can we then, based on all of these estimations, what do we think the true value is? based on our estimates of our estimates. Remember, our sampling distributions are based on this idea that we are resampling from the same population over and over again. That's what our simulation is trying to track. So what I've done at the end here is I've gone and calculated the averages and the standard deviations of all of our examples. And our mean of the means is 1.385 which is very close to our 1.4, that was our true value. Um, I've calculated this, the mean of our intercepts at 11.899, which our true value is 11.1. So that's, that's more in the ballpark than some of our you know, wide range of variability. And the average of our correlations is also 0.6. So again, I, this is not based on any sort of uh, real data, so I can't tell you what the actual correlation is, but we know we could calculate the, this, the variance and the standard error and those other things if we wanted to. Um, we don't really, the calculating the, the confidence intervals and things like that around correlation is sort of messy because it has to be bounded between zero and one, and we're not really gonna do that here, um, but, uh, with our simulation, we can make some estimates. But these do get us sort of close to the true values. And as we've seen in our previous simulations, we can, because these all still have the random uh, number generators all still built into the formulas, we can recalculate all of them and sort of redo the simulation to see how these values change. And we can see, okay, all these values changed, all of our simulations changed, and our calculations changed. Our correlation remained about 0.6. This is 0 0.605 instead of 0 0.61 something. Uh, our intercept approximation went down a little, but it's still in that ballpark of 11.1. It's on the other side of it now. Our slope is 1.41. So again, we're still in that nice ballpark for our slope estimate. Let's try one more time. 1.399 for our slope, we're getting really close. 11.47, again, closer. 0.63, that's our correlation. And again, we can, we can simulate this a couple of times with our averages and we can see where they go. And again, there's still a little bit more variability for the intercept. The correlation seems to be staying around 0 0.61, 0 0.62, 0 0.63. Um, Sometimes we get really close to our true population mean. We can also calculate from these values, we can calculate their standard deviations. And so I've gone and I've, I've, I've calculated those standard deviations just using this regular standard deviation formula. And these are going to be very similar to the outputs, the standard error calculations we get for the coefficients when we run our data analysis tool pack regression model. Now I've actually done that for one fixed example that I have over here so that we can compare the calculated values from that one example to the calculated values we are getting from 
our simulations. And you can see the standard deviation of our simulations for this particular outcome was 0.3, and the calculated one from this one example was 0.29. The standard deviation for our intercept we've calculated from our simulation to be 14.58. And from the formula for the standard error for the intercept is 13.99. So we're again, really close to that ballpark. And we can run these simulations again, and we can see that our standard deviations for our simulation stay more or less in that same ballpark for our standard error estimates from our single sample. Um, they again, they do vary a little bit based on the data, but you can see they're all sort of falling in that same ballpark. So every time we do these estimates, we're estimating from an estimate, and that's just the the way that statistics goes. Now we've also calculated from this regression model from one um, fixed set of values the confidence interval, the 95% confidence interval from that one data set. And so I've copied these here. And then uh, again, these are estimated from our one regression line. The low, the confidence interval around our, our slope was between 0.96 and 2.17. And that's from right here. And the confidence interval around our intercept was from negative 26 to positive 31. Again, that 11 is about in the, the center. And we saw from our simulations that we were getting values that were more or less most of the time in this range. Now, the other thing that we can do is we can then calculate using our um, our standard deviation that we've calculated from our simulations, we can go ahead and calculate confidence intervals using that data. And so what I've done is I've calculated the margin of error using our T inverse function to get our 95% confidence multiplier times our calculated standard deviation value. And so we can compare the confidence intervals we're getting from our simulation to the confidence intervals we got from, again, this one example. And in this particular case, our slope confidence interval is between 0.46 and 2.26 compared to 0.96 and 2.17. Our confidence interval for our intercept is from negative 28 instead of negative 26 to 53 instead of 31. And if we can get re-simulate that, sometimes we'll get boundaries which are a little closer. So this one is just generally higher. This one is a little bit lower. But you can see how these do tend to fall into this common range of values um, based on the simulated standard deviations, these are measuring the same things. But again, we have randomness, we have variability, and so they're not going to be exactly the same based on our simulation and based on a single example. But we're estimating from estimates. I also created a confidence interval for the, um, uh, the correlation, which, as I said, calculating that is a little bit more complicated, and it doesn't come out of our uh, data analysis tool pack results. But you can see that assuming the correlation is randomly distributed and we're not like near the boundaries, um, we get a confidence interval between 0.42 and 0.85. And if you think about going back to our simulations, that's sort of the range that our confidence levels, our correlation values were in. Um, we, we did have some that were as low as 0.4 and we had some that were higher. 0.79. Now again, I'm estimating, and I'm I'm I'm. There's a 0.85 right there. Where did it go? There's a 0.85. So 
95% of the time, what we're expecting is that the bounds will be in between these values. And that does seem to align with what we see in our distribution, in our, in our simulations. Now, the other thing that I've constructed here is I've constructed a graph so that we can see what happens visually to our slopes and our data as we recalculate. Now, I've only plotted five sets of these values instead of all of them because the graph gets too hard to follow. And I plotted two regression lines based on um, um, the series one and series two values, just so that we can visualize what's going on as we recalculate. And here you can see that in these two cases, the slopes look like they're pretty similar. Um, the intercepts are a little different, but the lines seem to run basically parallel to each other. Now, if I recalculate here, you can see that the slopes are a little different in this case for these two uh, data sets. Um, again, the data is all appearing more or less in the same. You can see that it's simulated from the same data, but we're going to get different intercept values definitely in this in these two because the slopes are more different. Now these two lines are almost on top of each other. These two lines are now crossing. The slopes are very different from these two simulated values. So you can see as you keep going through and recalculating these things that you can see there's sort of, a, there's, a, there's not like totally free range variability here, but there is some variability. And depending on how far away you are from the intercept with your data, um, the intercept could vary quite a bit more just because it's further outside the range of the data you're dealing with. But you can see that the slopes do tend to remain similar, although they do change with each simulation. So when we build our confidence intervals, this is what we're trying to estimate. We're saying that as we sample from the population, we're not going to get perfect examples of what the slope is and what the intercept is. But we want to try to put a ballpark figure around it based on our knowledge of the way that the sampling distribution is going to behave. And what we've done here is simulate um, those sampling distributions by creating a, you know, nearly 100 simulations and then calculating from those and comparing those to our uh, der formulas, der our values derived from a single simulation, a single um, sample. And we can see that they are going, this confidence intervals do tend to capture the values that we calculate from our single observation. And they do a pretty good estimate, a pretty good job of estimating sort of the range of possible values as well as the standard error. 